maybe this is a mistake. Maybe we'll come back next week. I have time? Maybe up to lunch. <laughs> so, um, yeah, what we're doing today is we're going to look at continuing the HTML tables project. Project. Uh, in particular, we'll look at making, we're looking at testing it, right? So, as far as I'm aware, there, there are a couple of publicly available testing frameworks that I know of. I do know all of the Carlisle group uh, repositories contain a folder full of tests and those are just functions that are called um, but I don't know if like run tests is a I don't know if testing is part of the dado framework I'd have to guess that it would be uh, in the reference when you release new version show changes source code version versioning versioning is not something I do very well either so yeah ignore this okay the workspace let's <clears throat> Start with uh, using CIDR to open my project. Don't care about that. Good. Um, yeah, there's talk internally about having some mechanism that would mean we wouldn't have to have the hash dot underscore tatan. Uh, namespace in here but I'm not worried about that for right now I know that although I should double check cider dot view config no, okay there's nothing bait in there but it does need to be a tests folder let's look at conventions Apple team keeps the tests outside the Apple source. Um, Dbuild test is using the Apple team code coverage package. Interesting. So maybe they're more much of a muchness. And. <coughs> And I think I see typically Dado, no, uh, Carlisle Group stuff having tests in the Apple source. So this is really to do with git commands. What oh, acre tool? Acre tools? Acre desktop. What you see the test oh here the tests are outside the apple source. Okay, so I guess it doesn't matter. So enhancement to dialog APL as user commands that introduce the concept of project. This is what's evolved into Dado as far as I'm as far as I know. Um Okay, project statistics. Whereas I know that CIDR has this tests and and CIDR dot run tests uh, is what you specify an expression. 
So really, really need to look at cider. I guess we're going to go the APL team way. So it's, I'm already using cider to manage the project. Um, yeah, but where does one? Oh, is that just what these are? They're just expressions. Like make. Run tests. So is this a... Check the docs. Is this a folder? Is it an APL function? I don't know. Uh, user guide, maybe reference. Hmm. Tests. Or an expression that would execute the tests. Okay. Problem is we have where we are and technically link knows where we mm, link doesn't know anything. <laughs> and source is the apple source, but I don't want to publish the tests, do I? I don't want someone who consumes this to use it, presumably doesn't want the test suite in their project. Okay. Okay, but say I go here and I look at the cider config for this. Test cases dot run tests. That'll be an apple source test cases run tests. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. So what's the so what's out here? Some ini files. Interesting. So it does involve having the test cases in there. And of course, uh, if I install package tester two, ugh. Hello, hello, hello from Melbourne, Australia. Hello, programming Siri. Sorry, this one's like, I'm not gonna lie, it's gone a little dry because um, you know, usually the best thing to do is think of what, think of something to do, then have at least half a go at doing it once so you know where you're going to be going with it and then when you come to do the stream you're just sort of following the following the steps um but this time I haven't looked ahead of time <laughs> looked ahead of time of 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 what to do so I thought okay well maybe I can uh, get these testing frameworks and and compare them but obviously that basically involves me largely just um 
sat here reading a bunch of text <laughs> to figure out uh, what do I need to do to get set up. And for example, I know that, so, so my project is already using Apple Teams Cider as the project manager. Oh, okay, they've already thought of it. And I was thinking, well, okay, Tester 2 is also on Tatan, which is their testing framework. Um, Davin Tester is also on here. That's the main repo one. It's the config. So we could also try this out, we could try Davin Church's Tester. And, you know, so we can compare these uh, testing frameworks. There's also dtest, uh, which has been used internally by Dialog for a while, but just sort of on a sort of why not basis is, you know, in case other people find it useful, it's published as a public GitHub repo. Um, I'm also seeing it's depending. I wonder if that's a sub, whatever it's called, sub GitHub sub module. Um, it's using Apple Teams code coverage class to do code coverage. But anyway, so so what would be what would be involved in setting this up? Do 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 do, do, do. array oriented mindset books. Um, what books do I recommend to get the array oriented mindset? Mm -mm 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 -mm. I can't do everything at once. What is there really? In terms of a book, the reason I'm hesitating on this is because, um, you know, if you look at our, well, if we go to APL wiki learning resources, maybe that will help. But if you look at the sort of typical, um, like introductory APL books, the target audience are these you know, is the is the so-called domain expert, but actually they have different goals to a lot of the people who are picking up array programming these days, and are treating it as like a, a different paradigm, right? A new and different paradigm way of thinking about solving problems. So actually, a large amount of the content in these books doesn't talk about different approaches to programming which is what a modern new user might appreciate. But actually, it's a lot of stuff about just practical. How do I write an application? You know, how do I save my work? How do I get things done? Um, of course, XPQZ, uh, Stefan Kruger's book, I think, has some nice little... Let's see. Has a nice little um section at the end. So I'm trying to find it. Learning APL by Stefan Kruger here. Any more really? Because otherwise, yeah, that type of content or thinking about the array-oriented mindset is sort of dispersed throughout all kinds of little articles. Um, maybe that's a good idea. We could collect those together and put them as a single resource. Um, okay. So I think at the bottom is somewhere it says the APL way. And here you've got your sort of classic comparisons of like, all right, here's what you might do programming 101. Let's, let's iterate on something using for loop. Array design patterns. This of like a, the structure of an entire application, more so than approaches to solving individual problems. 
Is that what you're talking about? Because then you're scratching the surface of, frankly, a controversy. But it's interesting to talk about. Because, yeah, even this page, right? Yeah, even this page of the book is largely about, you know, given an individual problem, what's the array-oriented way of, uh, of solving it? If you're talking about software architecture, is that what you mean by design patterns? If you're talking about software architecture, then what you've got is um, a can of worms, really, because the sort of popularized not popularized but the two things that are, are probably pushed the most or or most visible in terms of like new APL or APL things that, that people who aren't array programmers have seen are the Game of Life example on YouTube and the co-defense project. But both of these are in a sense um, extreme examples of using APL in a sense. Oh, do we have the whole thing? Uh, that's playing it through. Ah, whatever, you see end life somewhere. How is that not a link to that? Defense.dialog. Oh, okay, the general array oriented idioms, then yes. Uh, okay. Then, yeah, for example, this page on the APL way. I should collect something like that. Um, I've got an idea for one tutorial that I ran as a workshop recently, which is if you go to Apple Cart and uh, hmm? If you search for partitioned, oh, fast partitioned, I think. The most used idioms in APL. Those will all be listed in Apple Cart somewhere. I think of interest are... Um, See, array programming patterns. I could write a short article on that actually. Because if I think about it, it's basically um, encoding logic as array selection. Right? So you do some, that's typically just like some condition and then use that to select from an array. Or, you know, either using uh, either selection or indexing, which I'm representing here with square, square brackets, but in the general case, you might not want to do that. Um, use of Boolean data. Very much follows from this, but the fact that we have... Um, you, know, you can do clever things with boolean scans and reductions and these are like the um, those are like the I'd say what traditional APL methods All right, so Boolean scans and reductions. What else have we got for patterns? Mask, not mask. Uh, you're not equal scan, less than scan. Um... Or even a really nice example that I'm working to publish on Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you take a Boolean matrix, but it's really a, a collection of rows of selectors or something like that. Okay, it doesn't really matter. What else in terms of idioms? There's currently a bit of discussion going on about how to deal best of nested data. Um, because we have quad JSON for converting between like text JSON representation or whatever it is. So it'd be like this as a character vector. This would be like key value or something. And then an, a namespace, right? But then to work on that, it requires you to basically um, iterate and then take a value error. The apple cart, I think it's 10, 11. Yeah, what's going on? Six. Uh, and then provide a default. Otherwise, you're looking, yeah, sort of iterate on namespace. Loopless programming. Yeah, we could do a collect in a few of those. Morton's favorite example, if you're interested. I think we've got a video about that from a while ago. Uh, about snail sort from long, some time ago. And then um, there'll be plenty plenty of stuff in the other array languages um, anything specific here that's actual recursion I thought they I mean I know that it's called no stinking loops I was wondering if there was some writing Do, 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 do. Vector papers. No, I thought there might be something there. But that's a good request. Um, yeah, because there are specific examples, things like the, the snail sort, which basically involves figuring out the... You know what that is? That's the like, it's like printing this out one, two, three, six, nine, eight, seven, four, five. So, like going around and the sort of intuitive way to do that is something like, oops, the intuitive loopy way to do it is to take the first bit, catenate with, uh, you transpose it. Oops. That's the uh, oh, and reverse it. Three six nine. Oh, hold on. Let's move it over there. Then move it over there. Okay. Reverse along the co uh, columns. So reverse each row, then transpose. Right. Then you got the three six nine there. Um, and we drop before, and if it's empty, return whatever. Otherwise, we'll take the first row, catenate with recurse on. Yeah, so we need to catenate the end. Okay. Anyway, so there's examples like that. I'll, you know, there's this video. You just search loopless snail so you find me talking about that. Um, where the loopless way to do it is to work out 
the sort of steps ahead of time. Use arithmetic basically to work out indices and then index into the array. That's pretty much, that's encoding logic as array selection. The other thing is, yeah, um, using arithmetic in place of, uh, yeah, in place of your if statements, right? You, you, you use arithmetic. Um, that was actually a topic of this workshop, which I gave at the recent user meeting. Um, so yeah, more classic examples. You've got 12 salaries in, I think it's four groups here. And, you know, if a person is in group B, increase the salary by 10%. If it's in group D, increase by 5%. And again, instead of looping over groups and percentages, you sort of use arithmetic. And then this is like the simple, you know, introductory example, the, the, um, the comparisons and the arithmetic is done separately. And then the goal is you take that further and uh, and try to do all of the increases at once. I think I can grab this, can I? Be right, like a short a short book that's a collection specifically of these, maybe not for people who've never done APL before, but for people who have done some APL but are looking to do more array thinking because you have to have at least a basic understanding of uh, the array operations anyway that's a shout so I'll look at that drafting that collecting some things ask some people yeah thanks for your question um, which say groups indexed of What's the other way around? B, D. So I got ones and twos there. Uh, 10%, 5%, 0%. Those are increases or percentages. Then I guess if you add one salaries times those, then what's that? 35, 35 is supposed to increase where? Here in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, it's increased by 3,000, which is 10%. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. For example, uh, a collection of just treatments like this would be pretty useful, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, if you want to know any more, let us know. Like I said, I, yeah, for an APL-specific book that isn't already, you know embedded deeply in um in another book would make sense these are good examples yeah right down to do that Array patterns. Loopless. Yep. And yeah, Apple Cart fast partitioned. So these are basically um, array techniques from 
before nested arrays were introduced into into array languages. So one example is um, if you have, you know, here is some text. If you want to reverse each of the strings in this, the kind of modern nested array approach is to split it up, split on spaces, reverse each piece of text, and then one way or another, there are two main ways to do this, but rejoin the text. Whereas the array or the, the traditional flat array approach, which if you think about this each as like a an explicit loop, right? We're saying reverse each of the uh, strings. To do it without reversing each of the strings, uh, something, what did Aaron call it? The, the equivalence of reversals of reversals. So I think we need to, we need to pad with spaces in order for this to work. Uh, unfortunately, so this is space, comma, right tag, comma, space. Is that not a function? Oops. Oh, sorry. Can't end a train with a... <laughs> yeah, that's what's lame about this. Yeah, okay. Uh... Okay, so where's the spaces? Do a plus scan. Uh, so you get a kind of unique number covering each of the words, plus the surrounding spaces, I suppose, or at least one of the spaces. And which way is it? I think you need to reverse and then grade down the reverse of this because we do one reversal by doing a grade down. The problem is one, two, three, four, five. Oh, no, this is right. Because we're finding the indices that would sort this uh, in reverse order, the highest number gets put first. The index of the highest number gets put first. The indices of the numbers below that, but then within each uh, collection of the same number, the relative indices stay in order. But if you reverse that again, now we have the collections of indices in the original order but the order within each is reversed. And then uh, and then you just use that to index. For example. So, all right, last, um, let's say last 20 minutes of this. Let's go back to the original Let's get let's get a little bit of work done. So, um, all right. So we've sort of vaguely been comparing some things, some testing uh, frameworks. I guess we'll go for the test to one. Let's just because it'll it will take the whole time to figure this out, uh, to get it working. And we did see in the cider docs that 
tatam folder can have packages and it can have packages dev. Load all tatam packages that are installed in the project so full of packages into the namespace that hosts the project. Load all tatam packages that are installed in the project subfolder packages dev. Okay, so uh, view config. Okay, we do still have a project open. Um, tests. Uh, yeah, and we'll edit this and say that we have packages and packages dev equals tests. <laughs> That's fine, we don't have any changes to be in the workspace anyway. Load all to time packages that are installed in the projects subfolder. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice trick, isn't it? Or it's a nice uh, technique. And then in general, like, yeah, plus scan is one when you first learn to do APL and you're just doing basic, like, data manipulation. You sort of forget about it a lot. It's not till you trying to write algorithms and care about performance that it really comes into its own. Okay, so now we're going to install packages into uh, uh, called tester2 into packages dev. Oh, yes. Yes. What is that? Is that a namespace? Is that in here? Fine, whatever. I guess you document the API as the API. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a namespace which we child. Oh. So HTML table dot tests. All right, okay. And then we want to reopen the project. Uh, are we allowed to do the name? Oh, it has to be a full namespace reference. Okay. Then that's the one thing that's a little weird. And again, it's because this, I think it's because of this sort of, you know, historically APL has not been all about text files or files on folders. It's about names in a, in a workspace. So when you open the project, you have to refer to this folder. When you close the project, you refer to, you probably can refer to the folder. Uh, delete contents, yes, no. Names in HTML tables. Now there should be one called tests. So now HTML table dot tests. Uh, and that's just, that's got nothing in it. Oh, it's got tester two in it. Is it? It's not a. So now I have to use tester two. 
Manage and execute tests in tester two, is that class, then code coverage, which is recommended. We'll get that later. <laughs> There's a GUI. Maybe one day we can look at making that. So apparently it's Windows only. <laughs> so maybe we can look at making that cross-platform at some point. OK, that's what's the status. Don't mind. We create that. All test functions inside the namespace start with names test underscore. So for example, okay, now let's get thinky about it for ten minutes. Maybe maybe I'll stay on a bit longer. So I want to do some case based testing and I want to try and do some property based testing. Easiest ones to test are probably fetch and extract tables. I need to come up with edge cases. I already know something that fails that I'm trying to fix, so we could arguably pop that in. I should probably make a fork. I'm sorry, make a branch to implement this testing stuff. Um. Yeah, so we're going to go in head and clear the workspace. We're going to kill everything. Um, and just deal with testing. So let's go ahead and stash all this. Uh, tester two. Has the main been updated? No, there's all kinds of things like moving into subfolders and stuff. I could go ahead and merge. It's going to get messy, isn't it, if I branch off there? Well, you know, let's just do the work. We can deal with it later. Okay. Uh, we actually want to ignore that. Tester 2. Well, we're not really done setting it up. I guess we're installing Tester 2. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Then it's. Test stop. Test. Test fetch. Mm -hmm. 
We'll just make this a function. Convinced. Also, is it supposed to take arguments? All test function start with test underscore. Yeah, okay. Yeah. A single file. Um, oh, the syntax of test functions except the right argument. Five control functions. Debug flag. Uh, different start with. Debug flag zero, the test function will finish and return the symbolic name failure. Well, debug flag one means it would crash. So, therefore, we need to put uh, yeah, okay, so it enforces some infrastructure. Fails if passes if. So we get okay. Is this going to be some kind of trad fin that does this thing? So HTML tables dot tests dot tester two dot get no. Well, where the hell? Hold on, I've installed tester2. Where does one get test template? Admin test cases. That's a class. Oh, we have to make a new tester. That's right. Uh, okay. So what would run tests do this? Okay, and you'd be like T T gets quad new tester two dot uh, it's a class, right? Uh Okay. Um Oh, here we go. Workflow. Hello. Mm. I don't know, that sounds spammy, huh? We'll see. <laughs> Uh, no matter which of the run functions you're going to call, work for the same. Create an instance. The instance. Okay. Is a namespace full of tests. And I need 
to read some more. Oh, fantastic. Um, blah, blah, blah. cat facts API or whatever test API. Free APIs. Test your API online. Rest test test. Just on a website we can fetch something from. Cat fact, cat facts classic. Because getting a web page and checking that it matches the exact uh, HTML for when you fetched it before seems like a bad idea. We could just check the response code, but then we're just testing HTTP command, which while is a valid thing to do, what does fetch actually do? Well, it literally just runs HTTP command, so... <laughs> It's the sort of thing that will fail in a very obvious way. Yeah, okay. Okay, so let's go into the HTML tables namespace test dot test fetch one is going to fetch cat fact. And all of our test functions do what? Well, the second thing we're going to do is try to. Oh. Get test template, and what do you call it? Three misc oh one uh, fetch oh two fetch two then what? Oh, we have it. Oh, here we go. <laughs> well, that's lucky because I did that. I did call my uh, instance of tester 2t. And some go to's. And a quad trap. So this is very old school. Top flag, batch flag. And it returns t dot underscore OK. So if I fetch one. Stop batch is our argument. Trap all 
N. The N flag. Next, just continue. Right. Hmm, 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 hmm. Right, then. Case such test function already exists that we have written. Can't do the scripted namespace, fine. And then a bunch of constants. Method to list these. <laughs> and two arguments. No. Oh man, okay. I mean, another thing this can do is uh, there we go, syntax of test functions. Another thing we can do is uh, rewrite this documentation to not be like one long markdown file at some point. But that's only if we decide that we like this, we're going to use it. And develop it some more. Every test function must accept a right argument, which is a two item vector of booleans. Debug mode. If something fails, then we're supposed to crash. Uh, okay. If your test requires a human to do something, so if batch flag return underscore no batch test, how are you supposed to do? So this is what you would do. I'm not. I don't think I need this for this function because there's no human interaction required for any of my tests. I think, but you would return underscore no batch test. And debug flag is one. Then we crash on the spot. We can use that in quad trap. Or in a tradfin colon trap and trap. Stop flag, I think. Compress zero or reshape zero. Um, I 
Yep, symbolic names. Yep. If zero is length, well, what would happen? It would suspend. It signals HTTP state. It's not even the best function to test then, is it? Because it could signal anything. If there's an error, then go for failed. Otherwise, it's okay. Whew, not mad on that. Uh, not keen on that really. Test fetch 002. Trying to grok what the stop flag should do. This is called debug flag and that's called batch flag. If it's a one, assuming that all tests use the flow control functions, then the difference is test function will finish. and the template so and keeps trap local these functions return a result I see so you don't have to do anything with them yourself you're supposed to You're supposed to call the function say that uh gets fetch the cat facts. passes if zero is less than shape the result fails if something bad happens what if an error occurs we don't know Okay, runs all the test cases. What? Who's got an invalid right argument? I mean, there's, God, there's a fair argument to say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I should just write something smaller. Yeah. We're supposed to we're supposed to call it using a debug flag. Okay. Oh run GUI takes. Uh so what about run? Hmm. 
run, run match test, run GUI, run these and run. Are running all or selected test cases with or without error trapping? Run requires a Boolean right argument. One makes it free and fail on a line that fails to return the expected result. Zero does not. Stop on fail. Okay. And then this is a bunch of code that determines which functions to run and a bunch of other stuff. Okay. And to output nicely to the log. Figure out what operating system we're in in case any of our tests depend on the operating system. We were supposed to have an any file. I should really read more, huh? Oh, I'm just getting spam. Am I allowed to, can I report from here? No, I'm not seeing it. Well, if you're here, I should get a moderator. Not really, I'll just delete them afterwards. And all the other stuff. And there's a bunch of stuff. What are we deleting leading blanks from? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, okay. When do we get to my functions? No function called initial. It's fine. Okay. It's found my tests. It's going to output something to the log. It's going to process my code. Is it? Uh, no. Oh, we finally made it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um ah tester two dot uh t t dot okay eh yeah. Okay, so it's tests dot run tests. Let's dot fetch dot test fetch o two didn't get run. Oh, yeah, no, no, there we go. Uh, 
And there are all these like trad films of localized quad trap. Everything's localized in a defen, so can you not write tests as defens? Hmm. Interesting. Um, what happens if I make you fail on purpose? Or at least I hope you t fail. Oh, you do that. And that's debug flag. Yeah. Something was signaled. No. Uh. Okay. Ooh. Um, okay, and what if I run test zero? It still fails. So what am I supposed to be doing here? Trapper 404 and this didn't sound right. Execute. Reckon? Don't know. Let's try and no. Um. Test. Run test zero. Are we just straight left? We didn't even finish the report. <sighs> it feels like a thing to come back to, you know. I I don't need for my app to have all this infrastructure. That's been developed over time for a Apple team. Now I feel I'm in two minds. I feel like I should be trying to use one of these. I know they're only published and they all say this, you know, if it's flexible enough for you, blah, blah, blah. But I know, for example, you could just write a uh, a run test function loops through all the tests uh, something like 
I don't know. There's a D op or as an operator of some kind. If there's an error, return what the error number is. You reckon? Well, I doubt this is going to be any good. Otherwise, zero and otherwise alpha alpha omega it should do the assertion as well shouldn't it then we look for I reckon it's in here yep Another one called assert looks like this. And then run is going to assert. Alpha matches alpha alpha omega um is that right and then if <laughs> does we drop down if not well, either there's an error something like that then uh, I don't know okay test dot run tests not in debug fetch run Um, well, the assertion condition, mm. so not that there's a match. Uh. Mm. We have a function on there. Interesting. So instead of run, this would be called check or something. Check that omega omega applied to alpha alpha omega, which is alpha. Mm. Well, then we're just doing the assertion at another level. Yeah, but you want to be able to loop over these, or you, you want to be able to gather the results of running these, right? So, I've got a post processor. Apply to a function. Yeah, not very good. And only works with monadic functions. Doesn't make any sense. Six. <laughs> that's the that's the error, right? Oh yeah. 
Interesting. This time we definitely get alpha. Not the value error, right? That's a value error. And that's it. Why is this? Why is an error occurring? Oh, what do we not have a cert? We don't have a cert. Well, where was a cert defined? Yeah. Ugh, okay. Failure. There you go. Oops. It's just a zero. Right, that's all we wanted. Um It is not very fun though. Like this is not a nice way of doing it because yeah, okay, so what the framework provides and what you can see that you would want is an output that says running test and the test name which neither of these are. These are just inline these are assertions with some post processor. And then whether it passed, failed, with, and an error or whatever. All right, I'm gonna uh, yeah, I'm gonna go away, have a think about how I actually want to do this, and then come back next stream and actually do it a bit more streamlined and stuff. But uh, thanks, programming Siri for turning up and, uh, and asking questions and uh, it's a great suggestion to get some kind of more centralized collection or, or treaties on array programming uh, patterns loopless programming examples and things like that if we can collect that in one place maybe that's going to be of interest um, because like I said other examples tend to be in some other context and then hello to the spam which I'm going to delete um yeah sorry this was a bit of a dry one but uh, i'll try again next time but i'll go for now so see you around <laughs>